Smogon is a website tailored for competitive Pokemon trainers with plenty of helpful tools and guides. One of the most useful sections of the site is the Strategy Pokedex, which offers a comprehensive breakdown of top strategies used by competitively viable Pokemon. You'd think that this Strategy Pokedex contains only serious and well-structured entries of competitively viable Pokemon, right? Well, yes, but also no. It's pretty much a must to write series and detailed guides for competitively viable Pokemon, of course. But what about the Pokemon that are so bad, they make a casual playthrough against in-game NPCs an insurmountable challenge? In that case, it's nigh impossible to write a serious and comprehensive guide for those because, well, no matter how much you try to strategize, you can't really do anything against the competition. Think of it as a baby going up against a hungry lion. Yeah, that's just not happening. So with that being said, I'm going to show you three of my favorite strategy Pokedex guides from these hopeless Pokemon and we're gonna start with Magikarp Sun and Moon Entry This Magikarp entry has quite the backstory for an overview. Let's read it. The year is 2019. The Pokemon world, too, is suffering from the ravages of climate change. Decades of industrialization, oil spills, and poor environmental management have turned the seven seas into cesspools of toxicity. Oceanic food chains are collapsing as temperatures rise, boiling the sea. The ocean can no longer bear the legacy of human callousness. Yet still, something emerges out of the poisoned waters. A young boy casting his old rod, confident that he will succeed in his daily catch. A grizzled old man travels the waters in a rowboat, searching for a white waylord. These are the people of the damaged sea, and they will never abandon it. Much the same can be said about Magikarp. Boy, that was quite the backstory for a Magikarp. I almost forgot we were in Smogon reading a competitive overview of a Pokemon and thought this was some epic PSA for climate change. And that, my friends, is the beauty of writing a competitive analysis for a useless Pokemon. You can go buck nutty writing it since no one else is going to care enough to write a guide for that Pokemon. The rest of the analysis is pretty ordinary, so I won't be reading that. But it has, I think I'm funny for using this as its set name, so there's that I guess. I'm sure you now feel for those poor Magikarp, the young boy with his old rod, and the grizzled old man waiting for the Waylord. But it's time to move on to number 2. Our second entry is Hopip's black and white entry. Compared to the other Pokemon in the list, Hopip is probably the only one that actually has something going for it in its tier. But even then, it's hopelessly outclassed by other Pokemon in the tier, especially one that you will soon find out. So, let's see what the user Fate Crashers has to say about it starting from the overview. At first sight, Hopip seems like a highly mutated strain of Oddish. At second sight, Hopip seems like someone just dumped a bucket of pink paint on an Oddish. At third sight, Hopip seems like a cheap Chinese manufactured knockoff of the Kanto Oddish. No matter how you look at it, you're not getting past the fact that Hopip looks like an Oddish. So let's move on. As an Asian, I feel for poor Hopip here. Fate Crashers is giving it the Asian parent treatment of comparing it to a superior relative. Something like this. Why can't you be as culture as Oddish, Oddish? Speak six languages. Only language you speak is failure. Also, why can't you be as handsome as Oddish? You look like Tom Holland. You look like thank you. Next. Hopip sets are also written hilariously well, but I'll only be reading snippets of the best parts, otherwise, this would be like a 20 minute video. So let's jump right into Hopip's global warming set. The purpose of a lead in a Pokemon battle is to intimidate the other trainer and leave a streak in their undergarments that they won't soon forget. I have no idea why you want to use the cute, innocuous Hoppip for this role, but just in case you do, Smogun's here to walk you through the stages. So apparently, Hoppip's chlorophyll ability gives it a massive boost in speed under intense sunlight. Hoppip is holding a heat rock too, which means the rays last 60% longer. So be sure to slap on some sunscreen beforehand. You wouldn't want to get skin cancer like my Aunt Hilda. Yeah, I know she has cancer and all that, but that woman was dreadful. Imagine bringing family affairs into a strategy Pokedex. That's how you know it's a good one. Hopip is pretty much guaranteed to get its nuts toasted by an incoming fire attack. So be sure to pack a flash fire Pokemon of your own, such as Growlithe, Ponyta, or Houndor to take that hit. 
Wait, is Hopip itself a nut? Or is it a fruit? Or maybe a vegetable? Oh, great. Now I'll be thinking about that for the rest of the day. Just great. Well, Jumpluff is based on a dandelion, but I have no idea what the hell Hopip is based on, so you do bring up a good point. But now that thought will keep me up at night. Thanks a lot, dude. Let's move on to Hopip's other sets. Shiatsu Massage not included, and yes, that's the name of the set. Here's the plan, switch Hopip in while the opposing Pokemon is picking its nose or something and encore it. And while the opponent dies of embarrassment from being cheered on for picking their nose, feel free to throw a little bit of sleep powder or leech seed their way to really mess with them. Now, I'm normally someone who wouldn't shell out their hard-earned cash on this alternative medicine crap, but since Hopip is your own Pokemon, it's free of charge, so go ahead and treat the rest of your team to a little aromatherapy. Also be aware that Hopip's aromatherapy may attract hippies if used in one of the neighborhoods where they are likely to congregate, so packing a dark type such as Houndor or Stonky to handle them is recommended. Well, that summary, man, that summary was far out. Okay, okay, I get it. That was probably a terrible and offensive impression of hippies. Let's move on to the check encounter, shall we? Any changes in the weather will be a major threat to Hopip, whether it be a loss of precious sunlight or a gusty northeasterly that blows Hopip all the way to Reykjavik. So studying the weather forecast, learning the wind patterns, and familiarizing yourself with the intricacies of barometric pressure will all be essential for defeating Hopip. Or you know, Hopip sweet to ice, so you could always chuck your Trenta iced coffee with extra soy added. That should work. All in all, I think it's refreshing to read something like this in a site where all these strategy guides are meant to be serious. We actually learn a lot more, um, far out and groovy facts about Hoppy from this guide. And of course, we get to learn about Fate Crashers, poor Aunt Hilda, being put on blast for all competitive trainers to see. Here are some honorable mentions which I will only touch upon briefly. I'll provide all links to the Pokemon in the description if you want to read them. Takuna's Diamond and Pearl Entry, written by the Great Kakuna Man. Surely it wouldn't be biased. Comparing it to the likes of Azelf and Scizor, and also moving it up to the notoriously freaking epic tier. I love that section. Ledian Sun and Moon Entry has a lot of Captain Falcon references. It is a Captain Falcon main after all that only dreams it could punch just as hard. Then there's also Ledian's Gold and Silver Entry which rips it to shreds. Like look at its checks and counters. Basically anything that can attack. Ouch. And last but not least in the honorable mentions, we have Magikarp's black and white entry, which was way less forgiving towards Magikarp than that Sun and Moon overview. It also gave me an innovative use for Magikarp that I never knew about. With the nerf of Explosion and Self-Destruct in Gen 5, Magikarp lost out its main use as a sacrifice to switch in when the opponent goes boom. <laughs> well, I didn't know it could be used like that. Well, you know what that means, guys. We're going to have quite the shortage of cooked fish in the competitive scene from Gen 5 onwards. Really unfortunate. And now, prepare to have your heartstrings tugged for the last and best entry of all, which features the one and only... Love Disc. Specifically, it's X and Y entry. This entry is actually very well written from its inception to the end, and I find it really charming. Scorp Destroyer, you've outdone yourself writing this one. Join me through the romantic journey of Love Disc's X and Y entry, starting from the overview. The Sapphire Pokedex entry states that any couple that comes across a Love Disc is promised a loving relationship that never ends. The Emerald Pokedex entry states that giving a Love Disc is a way to express one's feeling of love. Just imagine meeting your soulmate in battle, and after an intense skirmish, sending out your final Pokemon love disc and declaring your undying love for your opponent what a romantic love story i completely agree this my friends is probably one effective way of trying to pick someone up in the competitive scene now let's move on to the rest of it and trust me unlike previous entries it just keeps getting better the love disc set we're going to be looking at is known as love disc wins and i mean come on the moves the item perfection I'll let Scorp Destroyer take it away from here. Attract a potential mate and entrance him, her, or it in your charm. Then set up a rain dance for a romantic sweet kiss in the rain. If you get rejected, this is also a very annoying moveset to face. If you can't win them over, you'd better make sure they suffer for it. 
that'll show him. Love always wins even if you get rejected because the face your opponent makes after you somehow successfully pull off those sweet kisses and attract will be priceless. Now, onto the set details. As a classic saying goes, only true love can thaw a frozen heart. Hydration on Love This ensures that it will thaw every time. The epitome of true love. Love This is also very versatile in its nature. Are you bold in love and you take your chances as you see them? Or are you the bashful kind that waits patiently for the perfect Prince Charming or damsel in distress? Love Disc has boundless options for you. Wage an intense battle with your opponent to build up feelings of excitement between both parties. After Love Disc's five other teammates have fainted, send it in with a proclamation of your love in the chat. Your proclamation of love should ideally be your original creation, but if you aren't the creative type like me, you could simply reference romantic works of literature that appeal to your opponent. Romeo and Juliet is a classic to quote from, but considering the average age group of Pokemon players, you're probably better <laughs> you're probably better off quoting from Despicable Me too. After you've successfully seduced your opponent, coax him, her or it to forfeit as a display of his, her or its loyalty to you. Not only will you win battles, you will also win hearts. Love wins. If you're a competitive trainer and want to find love, you all know what to do. Here are the team options for Love Disc. Apart from Love Disc itself, flowers are also supposedly very romantic gifts to present to your partner. Thus Roselia, Floet, and Sunflora make for good teammates. These Pokemon can also tank kits for Love Disc in battle as they are much bulkier. Your other teammates could depend on the kind of partners whose affection you're trying to win. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. And Carbing is therefore a good teammate to show your affection for a lady. It also hits harder than Love Disc in battle. As for their male counterparts, I've heard that dogs are a man's best friend. So you might want to pack a Stoutland or Growlithe in your team as well. Well, if none of the above works, you could try Poetry. And to cap it off, the checks and counters for Love Disc is... Love knows no boundaries. What an entry that was. And for those competitive Pokemon enthusiasts who are also looking for a special someone who also loves competitive Pokemon battling as much as you do, you now know what to do. Go get him, Tiger, and be sure to thank Scorp Destroyer if you ever win some hearts alongside your battles. And that's it. Those were my favorite entries of terrible Pokemon in Smogon's strategy Pokedex. I'm sure there's a lot more I'm missing, and if so, let me know if you come across any in the comment section below, and if we get enough of them, I might make a follow-up video. So yeah, that's it from me, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!